Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. We got an interesting pit of kit industrial oddware. Oh, that? Never you mind. This is a new perch for Duclaw's pilot house. Plum wore the other one. Clean out. <laughs> no, no, oh, God. Sad state of affairs here. Rust in my pipes. To, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, this is a wax motor. You heard that right. It's a wax motor. It actuates using wax. I try not to be alarmed, but I'm gonna come at this in reverse here on account of chances are when I get her A part, it'll be completely fuckered. So I'm actually gonna actuate this. And we'll show you how it works. It looks like a solenoid valve for all the world. It's even got the, the two little leads there. It is not a solenoid valve. It is a linear actuator what uses paraffin wax as the motivator. It's devilishly simple in its design. It has extremely high forces. We're gonna whop the power to her and I'll show you how it works. Okay, we got the dick in the vice. This is not the valve, it is the valve actuator. This would be attached to a normally closed little valve with a poppet on the end. And that would be say a mixing valve or some sort of valve for a radiator or heat exchanger, possibly hot water or some other uh, therm high thermal mass uh, heat transfer fluid, let's say ethylene glycol or something like that. And essentially what happens is we put power into here. It heats up a little two watt heating element. This is 240 volts. I'm not gonna feed it 240, just gonna feed it say 60 volts. It'll still get there in the end and then I'll stick this in here just as a flag to see what is going on. Now, the, the reason I even have my dirty dick beaters around this, uh, thank you for the scrap bin finds, but also, you know, the, the, the lonesome ladies of the internet, the, the fetish with the opening jar routine, that modeling gig is only gonna last so long. So I gotta, I gotta look down the road and I was thinking, what is an easy, easy way to have something that follows the sun. I got some solar panels I'm setting up there. What easily uh, follows the sun without too much control system or, you know, to want to get away from the Arduino in this. What about a wax motor that uh, when it's in the sun, the wax heats up and expands it. So you would set it up so that when the panel is dead aligned with the sun, this is not getting any any heat and then when it comes away from alignment of the sun uh, this gets heat expands and moves the panel back in so a very simple control system and it it finds its natural balance there'd be a, a lot of dicking around but that's the essential idea is that instead of having a motor you have a wax motor and of course one wax motor because it's so high force could move a hell of a lot of panels yeah that's the idea anyway, and just, just sort of dicking around. But these are really interesting, and they're, they're really only used in HVAC, in, in heating and ventilation. So we're going to turn this the power supplies on here. Well, we turned one on. Uh, i got to do some troubleshoot. Okay, got the power supply series up. That means we got 30 volts there, we got 30 volts there. That means we got 60 volts. We should be drawing. Well, if 240, you know, it should be drawn half, half a watt, but well, hopefully it actuates. Now this has all the appeal of watching your buddies get drunk. <clears throat> now, I'll explain how this works and it, it's, it has to do with the amazing property of paraffin. Paraffin is a nonpolar uh, hydrocarbon. So it's, it's not like water that has um, different poles. It's, it's nonpolar. It's an oil based thing, paraffin is, and it has a couple of properties that make it suitable for this application. One has very high thermal mass, so it takes a lot of energy to uh, get it to heat up. Also, it has just the right temperature of phase change where it changes to liquid. That's right around, I think it's like 50 C. 34 for some reason is jumping out at me, but I think it's more like 50. It might be 64 actually. 
In any case, it's right around the range that's not too hot, not too cold, kind of a Goldilocks effect. And it also has a very, very high thermal expansion coefficient. So in a changes phase, those non-polar, big, long hydrocarbon chains, those non-polar hydrocarbon molecules spread out from each other. What that allows us to do is as it heats up, changes phase, it allows us to put a hell of a lot of force on something because the molecules are actually pushing each other apart with just a little bit of heat input. Now, in this case, we're using electricity to give us the heat input, but we could just as very well use the engine, the heat from an engine, such as the thermostat in your car. This, that's, that's, the thermostat in your car is a wax motor and it's using the heat the latent heat inside the engine to actually get it to actuate. So there's many ways to do this. In this case, we're using a heating element to do it. In other cases, we could use whatever heat is around, like the heat of the sun. So, high for, I mean, it's quite amazing to me how simple this really is. Essentially, you pick the right material and it does the work for you. Now it occurs to me, standing here doing the Municipal Pothole Fillers Union uh, uh, thumb and bum routine, it occurs to me this is very, very smart as well because it's slow actuation. So it's slow to actuate in one direction. There's a bit of hysteresis there, uh, difference in temperature between actuation and, well, retract and extend. But also because there's a high latent heat capacity in that paraffin, it doesn't slam on an ORF. It eases on an ORF. So you got a heating system with steam or, or a hot fluid in there. That is a very good innate feature. You couldn't get this valve to slam on and off if you tried because you got to take the heat out of that paraffin and that takes a while. So nice smooth actuation. That is working a little faster there now. We're up to 18 interesting artifact of that is it's a positive temperature coefficient heating element because the wattage keeps dropping so we know that the resistance is increasing because the voltage hasn't changed at all that means we got to have <clears throat> some sort of uh, positive temperature coefficient heating element in there not just straight resistive so that ensures that we don't go over temperature we don't cook that paraffin right out of there i Trust we can all agree to never speak of this again. All right, Yagu, that's the normal position. Ooh, ooh, a little bit too close for comfort. I get that a lot. Okay, so that is the retract. This is a normally closed position, so that's retracted. Or no, what was that? Yeah, that'll be retracted, and then when we energize it, heats up the paraffin changes phase it goes from solid to liquid expands uh, puts out a hell of a lot of force and this little teat pops out i was witnessed by the apprentice marks here the thing tough to get into and the trick of it is getting into her without uh, putting this right through the meat of your palm nice evening trip to emergency always a favorite Jesus, this thing's tough to get into. Now this is a Danfoss, so it's gonna cost you a little bit extra, but hopefully, well, we'll see. Hopefully, a real good quality component. Now, that's the thing, I got no problem paying extra for something, you know, name brand, as long as you're not just paying for the name brand. As long as that name brand comes, you know, it's labeled on good components, because a lot of times, you don't know until you get in there. You get in there and it's the same old junk as the cheap Chinese. Just, you're just paying for additional ah, Gucci purse for frogs, snacks. This thing's going to need some more champagne and caviar to get into her, I think. She's a uh, 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 fancy uptown rig. Now in this case, <clears throat> big stiff chunk of plastic. I how stiff that is. Can't even get it at. So that is, I would I would say that is a thermal set plastic, so a resin. It can't be remelted. That's what you want when you're when you're dealing with heat. That's for sure. And very stiff. 
a lot of meat there pretty heavy spring and all that's holding it together is the little tabs on here and the the, the body of the thing so yeah, it has to be reasonably skookum and now we'll get into the actual moving part this is a cute little mechanism we got a Rhodesian reach around happening here on account of this expanse but in the cold okay in the normally in the normal state this is pushing down so that would mean that this is this is pulling okay how's this work now so this is going to bear on this guy so that pushes that down okay yeah that pushes that down but then when we heat up this element it's going to expand you look at the uh, well here's the the PCT the positive temperature temperature coefficient uh, heating element right here and we just touch like that so this expands and it actually pulls actually pulls this guy up which bears on that middle platen and that bears on the valve so you heat this up it expands it pulls the whole works up and pulls this valve actuator up so that is how it works let's have a look at this uh, I'll put some capped on tape on here and then we'll we'll go mains and see uh, what we can see now, this little mechanism has to be sealed up so we'll check and see how long it is one and 17 thou about that much in metric And try not to melt our fillings here we'll just heat that up and see what we can see maybe with the heat gun well well yeah we'll be able to see exactly where it's heating up and contact and we got power six watts All right we're steady state on the PCT there we're steady state on the <laughs> watts going in so uh, that tells me that this is or it changes state at 36 degrees that my first my first instinct was right and, and that makes sense because remember when you were a kid you put uh, you put paraffin in in hot water and melt it and then dip your finger in to make a mold of your finger you remember doing that well if it was 50 degrees or 60 degrees you, you wouldn't be doing that now we'll check the length of her oh the little nub come out that's what happens and we're at uh, 1080 so it grew uh, 70 thou that's about two millimeters it's a uh, little less than she's used to but uh, you know you gotta piss with the cock you got high force though very high force so for valve actuation there's some interesting applications we could get into I think it'd be fun. I have some uh, 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 mandrel DOM. What do you call that? Diametrically over mandrel? No, do tubing. Anyway, seamless tubing. Jesus Christ! And micro honed. So we could make a big long cylinder full of fill of paraffin and warm it up and see what happens. See how much force we get out of it. See how much stroke we get out of it. That'd be an interesting experiment especially you think about it now you don't need you can get hydraulic level forces without a pump all you need is to heat up the paraffin no sacrifice to the god of destruction is complete without a full tear down so her not but an inch split right half in two from stem to stern from balls to taint <laughs> you can see the construction is quite simple but <laughs> clever very clever so the outside casement of brass and copper actually that's just copper plated brass and the, the paraffin itself has copper powder impregnating it that must be for heat transfer or possibly for uh, for thermal mass but uh, well wouldn't be for heat transfer because paraffin has its own convection it um, once you form a, a, a liquid layer around a, a prill of solid it convects on its own very quite quite well that's one of the nice features about paraffin 
as it melts nicely because of that internal convection. Then we have a little diaphragm here backing, sealing that, that what will be liquid in a plug of hard rubber and then a steel actuator piston. And the casement is just brass with some copper plating on the on the back side of the brass. That's that's it. And the size of Roi very likely put out 50 pounds. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if this put out quite a bit more than 50 pounds. So you look at this and you think to yourself, okay, so how do we get a linear actuator to do 50 pounds uh, if it's electric? <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Very special usage case, but yeah, you could use this this for a lot. You know, if if you have a bigger receptacle of yeah, yeah, I, I this is giving me some good ideas. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.